when I was upset, my head was hanging down, and my soul was feeling bad.
blessing to come to you today on this resurrection morning. Oh, what a wonderful day that it is. This day that we celebrate that the Lord got up with all power in his hands. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hearts and minds together as one. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you and we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity to come together electronically over the airwaves to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus knew years, 2,000 years ago, that the time would come when we would be facing this situation and that's why he told the disciples, where two or three are gathered together in my name, that I will be in the midst. Though we are not physically together, spiritually, we are together on one accord, and we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Lord, have your way. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you uh, for this opportunity to come before you on this Resurrection Sunday. And even though here in Alabama they are projecting some challenging weather to come our way, we are still going to celebrate through the storms and through the rains. We are celebrating another day that the Lord has sent, another day that he has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we hope that you all are fair and well in the midst of this uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we are claiming victory, uh, even though we are not physically in one place. But we know that with God all things are possible, and we are trusting and depending on Him. Uh, we are thankful that even in the midst of these challenges, our building project is, is going forth. Uh, the contractors have been complying with the governor's orders. And uh, believe it or not, there have been no more than 10 people on the building site at one time. But those handful of men have uh, gone forth to do great work, even in the midst of this challenge. We ask that you keep them lifted up in prayer. And we pray their strength and their health as they go forth to do this work. Not only them, but we ask that you lift up a special blessing for all of the health care workers who are on the front lines in this situation. Uh, pray for their strength. Pray for their physical and spiritual endurance. Pray that they will be reminded that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And we are trusting that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So let us remain prayerful. Let us also uh, lift up uh, our bereaved families who are going through in the midst of this season. Uh, we ask a special blessing on the Browning family on the passing of Mother Mary Browning. Uh, funeral arrangements to be announced. But um, in, in this time when we can't physically go and give the ministry a presence, uh, we can give the ministry a support through our prayers, through our emails, uh, even if you just drive by the house and wave at the family to let them know that they are not alone in this time of bereavement. Not only them, but all of those who have recently lost loved ones. Uh, we didn't lose them. We know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord when you wash your robe in the blood of the Lamb. So let us continue to encourage one another in the days, weeks, and months to come. This morning uh, we have a, a message that we want to share with you on uh, this Resurrection Sunday, uh, this Easter Sunday, this, this time when we come together to celebrate. I, I find it just um, terribly ironic 
that Passover and Resurrection Sunday are uh, running in the midst of this uh, coronavirus. Um, years ago, uh, in the times of Moses, uh, there was a similar situation in which God told his people to stay in the house, told them to eat a lamb prepared with bitter herbs, and to eat bread that was unleavened, eat it with your shoes on, and be ready to move at a minute's notice. And the death angel passed over and took all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt except those who had the blood of a lamb, slain a lamb without spot or blemish, because they had the blood of the lamb over the doorposts. God spared the firstborn in those families. We're pleading the blood of the lamb right now. The lamb that was slain before the foundations of the universe, so that we may have the right to the tree of life. This morning, I want to lift up two verses of Scripture from uh, the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. And our text reads, But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the utmost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. I want to talk uh, this morning from a topic, the resurrection of Christ and our great salvation. The resurrection of Christ and our great salvation. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. And we give you glory and honor. We thank you, Lord. That even in the midst of this storm, even in the midst of these difficult times, that you promise never to leave us or forsake us. And Lord, we are reminded of what the psalmist said, that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Be with us, Lord, as we go through this night. Be with us, Lord, as we go through these trying times, realizing that trouble don't last always, realizing that you said in your word in the times of trouble that you will hide us under your wings. Now, Lord, let your word go forth. Let your word be a word of encouragement and blessing and strength to your people to remind them of the hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the things that I find fascinating about this season, and, and, and please, let me give disclaimers right now. You, you have the human right to believe what you want to believe, to believe in whom you choose to believe in. And I will fight to the death to defend your right to believe as you wish. But I also have accepted a fact that I learned long ago that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day got up with all power in his hand. As I studied as I've read of different philosophies and religions, we are the only faith that puts our faith in the resurrection of the one who is the focus of our faith. The rest of those guys didn't get up when they died. But Jesus got up just like he said he would. And we are not only celebrating because he got up, but as the Apostle Paul says, that he was the first fruits of them that believe. In other words, because he got up, we're going to get up also. Uh, he wrote to the various churches and in the first century to remind Christians of that hope. And there are a few things that I want to share with you. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. 
Number one, if Jesus is not risen, the church has no message to a lost world. And that's 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 14th verse. If Jesus is not risen, Christians have nothing to believe. If Jesus Christ is not risen, the apostles and subsequent preachers have misrepresented God as having raised Jesus from the dead. If Jesus is not risen, your faith is an empty, worthless shell. Did you ever pick up a pecan shell or, or a hickory, what you thought was a nut, and opened it and there was no nut meat on the inside? If we don't believe that Jesus got up, we just an empty pecan shell. If Jesus is not risen, we are guilty and under the condemnation that results from all of our sin. If Jesus is not risen, those believers who died with faith in Jesus Christ have perished. They're gone forever and we're whistling in the dark if Jesus did not get up. And lastly, if Jesus is not risen, we are very sad creatures because we built our lives on an illusion. I remember hearing uh, Dr. James Dobson uh, talk about his father who was a minister. And he asked his dad why did he um, quit his job to become a preacher. And his father responded. He said, I heard about this man named Jesus and I literally bet everything I own that what I heard was true. We have put everything that we believe in this man from Galilee who got up on the third day with all power in his hand. Three things I want to share with you today as we talk about the resurrection because the resurrection is the foundation of our belief. I love Christmas. I, I like all of the songs and all of that good stuff about the babe in a manger. But it wasn't that the baby was born is where we base our hope. Our hope is based on the fact that he died and got up. See, number one, three things I want to share with you and and then we'll, we'll be finished for the day. The resurrection vindicates Jesus of Nazareth as God's unique son. Before the resurrection, the apostles believed Jesus to be the son of uh, God. And uh, they followed him. Uh, they they uh, saw many things that he did. Uh, and they knew he was the Son of God, and the fact that he fed the masses and raised the dead and healed the sick, uh, they, they, they recognized that no one could do what he did if he was not from God. But when he was crucified, that changed all things. When he was crucified, it was a personal catastrophe for them. Because they were building their hope on the fact that he would establish his kingdom on earth. Um, and they did not realize that the only entrance into his kingdom was through the doorway of death. His crucifixion demonstrated God's boundless love for unworthy sinners. Because by man, sin entered into the world, and a man had to pay the debt so that our sins would be forgiven. His resurrection vindicated that he was the son of the living God. Second thing I want to leave with you, 
the resurrection enabled Jesus to intercede for us in God's presence. Now, now please understand, he, he was praying all of the time that he was on earth, but he was limited by this physical body, this body that needed nourishment, this body that got tired, this body that could only do so much. He did many great things, but he had limits based on this physical body. Oh, but when he was crucified, he was able to go directly face to face <laughs> in the throne room and get this, not only in the throne room in the presence of God, but also to be present with us at the same time. He was able to intercede on our behalf face to face with God. See, uh, John the Apostle uh, wrote that, that uh, wrote this to encourage the, the saints and to encourage them uh, from living in sin. He said, My dear children, I write to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We have an advocate who sits at the right hand of the Father. And when we fall short, he just tells Daddy, my blood covers him. He's one of mine. The author of Hebrews says that he's a mediator. You know, and, and, and uh, many of us uh, don't really understand the, the significance of a mediator unless he has somebody who's negotiating a contract on your behalf or somebody who's representing you in the court of law. A mediator is one that, that stands between you and uh, the person with the power and making arguments on your behalf. Because just like Jesus is there making arguments on our behalf, every now and then Satan shows up and makes arguments against us. But we have a mediator that stands between <laughs> us and the Father to remind the Father that he died because the Father loves us. <clears throat> it is a victorious resurrection from the dead that gives us intercession. Now I know some folks saying intercession was that that's when somebody <coughs> prays for you. That's when somebody <coughs> steps in on your behalf. That's when Somebody goes, and even when we fall down, they go and present us in the best light. We have an intercessor, one who goes before the Father on our behalf. The resurrection vindicated his sonship. The resurrection enabled him to intercede for us in God's presence. And then the resurrection gave us a companion for the road of life. You see, Jesus is more than an inspirational memory of a man that lived 2,000 years ago. He's more than a historical figure. But he is that friend who watches us day and night. He is that friend that walks beside us. He is that friend that talks with us. He is that friend that inspires us. He is that friend that empowers us to be the best that we can be. We have a living companion who's with us day by day. 
In the Gospel of John, Jesus promised that the time would come when you won't really understand what's going on. But he said, I will not leave you as orphans. He said, I will come to you in John 14 and 8. I will not leave you comfortless. He promised that he would give us a helper, a paraclete, one who would come alongside us, one who would dwell in us and lead us and guide us in all righteousness, one who will remind us of everything he said and did, one who will remind us that this isn't our home, that we're only here for a season. But while we're here, we have to do the best we can while we can. Jesus promised that those who give themselves to him, that he would be with them. He said, if you abide in me, and if my word abide in you, ask what you will and I'll give it to you. If I live for Jesus and walk in the paths that he would direct for me, then there's nothing that won't be available to me. I'm reminded of my childhood when I made Jesus my choice. At the age of five years old, uh, our pastor, Pastor Coburn, opened the doors of the church and, and I felt a voice, I felt a presence that said go forth and I didn't go. That evening I sat with my mother on the porch and, and uh, mama didn't go to worship that day. I was there with my older siblings and I told mama, I said, you know, when Reverend Koga opened the doors of the church today, I, I felt like I wanted to go forth. And Mama said, why didn't you go? I said, well, you wasn't there, and I wasn't really sure. And, and we talked about it, and, and she asked me what I believed, that I believed Jesus was the Son of God, that I believed that he died, and on the third day got up with all power in his hands. And, and did I want to accept him in my heart as my personal savior? And at five years old, I said, yes, I want to do that. And Mama said, then next Sunday, when Reverend Koga opens the doors of the church, you go forth. And as a little boy, I went forth and, and gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I know a lot of you say, yeah, well, you know, I did that. I was five years old. I didn't know what was going on. I knew what was going on. I knew that there was a connection, that there was something that I needed to connect with, not knowing at that time it was God's Holy Spirit, that God had plans for me, just as he has plans for you. That Jesus paid the price so that I could be reconciled to the Father, just like he paid the price so that you can be reconciled to. Oh, what a blessing to put your trust in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm excited in this season. And I know folks say, Reverend Jones, you're always excited. Yes, I am. Because when I think about what God has done for me, when I think about where he's brought me from, when I think about where I started and where I am, I know it was by the grace of God that I'm here. I thank God for bringing us up out of a crazy situation. Uh, I thank God that he allowed me to be educated, even though I joke with my children all the time. You know, they, they're on the dean's list and, and graduating with honors. And 
I said, no, I didn't graduate uh, summa cum laude or magna cum laude. I graduated, thank you, Lord. I know that by the grace of God, he brought me. By the grace of God, he's planted me where I am. By the grace of God, he uses me to his glory. It may not be to anybody else's satisfaction. Well, that's your problem. I know if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. If it had not been for the Lord who protected me, if it had not been for the Lord who has kept me, oh, wretched man that I would have been if it had not been for the Lord. I'm thankful today. And I celebrate today, even though we're, we're here in the house and we don't have all the family around. Hopefully I'll get to talk with my siblings later on today. But I'm thankful because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And I challenge you today, if you have not put your trust in Jesus Christ, if, if, if you are thinking, well, you know, Grandmama went to church every Sunday, and, and I commend Grandmama, but you know, you're going to have to stand before the Lord on your own. My mama used to say every tub got to stand on his own bottom. We're going to have to stand to give an account. And when I stand there, I know that all my righteousness is as filthy rags. But I have an advocate. I have a mediator. I have an intercessor who will plead my case. Oh, the blood. The blood that washed my sins away. And that's available to you if you will put your trust in Jesus Christ. If you have not put your trust in Jesus Christ, then pray with me right now. Lord, I am a sinner. I've fallen short of your glory. Please own me as your child. And let Jesus come into my heart so that I might be saved, that I might be reconciled to you. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all it takes. That's all it takes to put your trust in Christ. My brothers and sisters, we thank you for tuning in with us today. Let us remain prayerful. Let us not be seduced by the hype. Let us not be impatient as God is working this situation out. Until further notice, the health department said, stay home. And if you don't have to go out, don't go out. If you do go out, if you got to go to the grocery store, you know, get you a mask. If you don't have a mask, put a bandana on. Don't, don't breathe on those folks who are trying to keep those groceries on the shelf. Because we want our folks to stay healthy. Let us continue to pray. We still have not gotten the widespread testing in Macon County that I think we should have. To date, last uh, statistics I saw, we only had 44 tests issued here in Macon County. We need a lot more testing. We're a county of about 20,000 people, but only 44 have been tested. We don't know how sick we may or may not be. But in the meantime, the only weapon we have other than the power and the power of prayer, our other weapon is social distancing. Keep yourself six feet apart, wash your hands, get you some hand sanitizer, 
do all of the things that they have encouraged us to do. If you don't need to go out, don't go out. And we are going to pray that God will send the healing. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, God said he would hear from heaven, he would forgive our sin, and he would heal our land. Let us remain prayerful. Let us pray for the healing of our land. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father, thank you. Thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to share a word of encouragement to your people. We thank you, Lord, that we're not constrained by a building and we don't have to be in a certain place. But if we come together spiritually, this spiritual warfare that we're dealing with is fought in the airwaves. And when we come together spiritually on one accord, you hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Let us remember that Jesus got up with all power. And because he got up, we will get up also. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And we're looking forward to what you are about to do. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our supplication. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Final thing, my brothers and sisters, we thank you for uh, your cooperation uh, in this trying time. We thank all of those who have uh, used the Givelify app to bring in your tithes and offerings. Uh, we thank you to all of those who didn't count it robbery to stop by and drop off your tithes and offerings. Um, we want to encourage you, uh, uh, touch base with a deacon if you uh, need somebody to pick it up, or you can mail it to our post office box, box 830685, Tuskegee, Alabama, 36083. However you choose to give, your gifts and your offerings and your tithes are mostly appreciated as the work continues, as we continue to do what God has called us to do. Again, happy Resurrection Sunday. We hope that as you gather virtually and otherwise, we pray that you would have a blessed day. God bless you. God keep you.
Oh, yeah. 